Hey yogis, welcome to the class. We will be moving the spine a lot, we'll stretch the legs a little bit and it will be um, around 40 minutes of stretching and moving around. So come to your mat, sit and find a comfortable position. You can maybe, if you are sitting cross-legged, try to change the way you are sitting, so maybe the other leg comes in the front. This is also good for your spine and especially for the connection of your sacrum, of your SI joint, so sacrum to your pelvis connection. And then relax your shoulders, close your eyes and just observe your breathing at first. You can elongate a little bit and you can also use your hands so since oftentimes we don't see actually where the spine is, how it's looking if we don't have a mirror or if we don't record ourselves and uh, look at it afterwards. So using your hands and just trying to palpate and feel the spine starting on, the, on your sacrum, so on, on, below your low back and then coming up your low back. It should be straightish or maybe there is a little bit of like curvature towards the front. And if this is not present, if, it's, if it feels rounded a little bit and you feel like a little bit of roundness also from the front side, so you can also touch your belly, then you can always put something underneath your butt to elevate the hips and this will take, have, get, give you advantage of allowing the hips to tilt forward a little bit. And then it gets trickier because up higher you can't really touch, but the rest of the spine should be somehow rounded-ish, but you can always touch your neck. So the neck as well, it starts at this big bump that you have. And from there, imagine a curvature forward. So you want it to go straight-ish and then a little bit back so correcting the head sometimes helps bringing the nose back. And again, come back to your breath and maybe notice if there is a change. Or maybe there is a change of how the breathing feels like. Try to relax as well your facial muscles, your eyes, your eyebrows, your cheeks and your jaw. And then again, maybe using your palms if this is something hard for you or if you have a stretchy band, you can as well grab a stretchy band and wrap it around your lowest part of the rib cage and use that as a reference for knowing where your body is moving. So closing your eyes again and then as you start, first exhale of course, and then as you start inhaling, try to breathe into your core, the whole cylinder underneath your ribs and into your lowest ribs. And then exhaling from those ribs and from your belly. Go a few more times, inhale, try to minimize the movement of the shoulders, exhale, inhaling for six, five, three, two, one, and exhale for six, five, four, three, two, one, inhale for six. And exhale for six, five, three, two, one. Go three or four more times on your own. Maybe trying to slow down your exhalations. And 
even releasing your hands and taking one more breath without the hands. And then uh, noticing again how you are feeling, how that make, made you feeling. And open your eyes. So we will just move a little bit with the shoulders. You can do like a big circle with the shoulders going up, then back and then pushing them down. And also imagining as your shoulder blades move. Again, you can't see them. Are they there? Probably. Can you move them alongside with your whole shoulder? So feeling the stretch in between the shoulder blades as the shoulders move forward. And then feeling the shoulder blades rising up. And then moving together as the shoulders come back. And then moving down as the shoulders drop down. So go one more time. Forward, up and back and down. And then change the direction. So moving back, up apart or together at the front down and again back up forward and down then interlace the fingers behind your back inhale press the palms back open the chest a little bit so there is already a slight back bend and exhale palms will come to the right side of your waist squeeze the elbows in so the shoulder blades go together and elongate the neck, bring the front ribs in, inhale and exhale, drop the head towards the right shoulder. You can close your eyes, neck is a part of your spine, so moving that part at the beginning first. You can move the head back and forward several times, you can rotate the head eventually slightly towards the ground and then move again forward and back and then move all the way with the chin towards your chest then towards the other side and then maybe completing the circle all the way going with the head back or maybe through the front and then to the left trying to really feel every time bring your head up the stretch on all the sides around your neck so really trying to feel and go to the full end range of the movement this time interlace the fingers the other way, so the other thumb is on the top. Inhale, stretch your arms back, chest forward, maybe even look up. And exhale, bring the palms from the other side, squeeze the elbows in, shoulders down, front ribs in. Inhale. And exhale, drop the left ear to your left shoulder. And again, you can close your eyes, you can relax your jaw, then moving the head back and forth. And if you did on the other side, maybe turn your head or your face towards the ground and then do a few back and forward movements here, very slow ones, feeling all the muscles. And then again, coming with the chin towards the center, feeling the back stretching, then towards the right side and then all the way back. Try to pull the shoulders down, especially there, so you want to feel the front of the neck stretching a little bit. But the shoulders go away, so there is almost like a space being created by pushing the shoulders down. Inhale again, palms away from your hips, chest up, maybe look up and here elongate the whole neck from all the four sides. And exhale, release, and even around the spine, grab your knees chin to your chest inhale pull on your knees open the chest shoulders come back shoulder blades together slide them down as you look up as you lift your chin and exhale very slowly starting from the bottom we'll be rolling the spine like a wave as you round then release we'll just do it so inhale first imagine elongating and exhale twisting to the right side also the next, the chin can stay at the throat slightly. Again, imagining that you want to create that uh, almost, it's not really like a back, but you're not raising your chin up, but you're bringing the head back. So it centers on top of your spine. You can grab your left knee or your thigh and use the left hand 
to twist you a little bit more passively. Inhale. And open the right collarbone, right shoulder. Exhale. And release carefully. Inhale in the center. Again, elongate. And exhale slowly. Twisting, rotating to the left. First without the right hand. Rotating also the head, looking all the way back, seeing how much can you go. It's very nice because here you have your hips somehow fixed, so although they might be shifting a little bit, then eventually grab your thigh or your knee and use that hand to open you even more. Inhale and exhale, squeeze the belly in at the end. One more, inhale, allow the belly and the ribs to expand. And exhale. And then turn all the way to the center. Inhale here. And exhale again, rounding. Then bring the palms down. We will come into the tabletop, which is like super basic, but it can give you so much, so much, so many kind of things. Stretching the fingers, spreading them a little bit. You can turn the palms slightly out so the index fingers are facing forward. And then grab them at with your fingertips. Try to put your knees underneath your hips. And we'll go for the cow tilt. So we will turn the pelvis or tilt, or tilt it forward as we move the shoulder blades together and slide them down as if we wanted to open and broaden the collarbones. And again, Shoulder blades are shifting down, so you have maybe a little bit more space for your neck to look all the way up or lift the chin up and exhale around the spine. Chin is going to your throat, but it squeezes in. Inhale, open, arch, and exhale, rounding like a cat. And then come to neutral position. We will side bend, so we will try to bring the right hip and the right shoulder together. And you can look over your shoulder towards the right hip. Inhale there. Exhale, squeeze a little bit more on your right side. Inhale, come to the center. And exhale to the left side. Inhale. Exhale, squeeze on the left. Inhale, back to the center. So this time... We'll try a different thing with the neck. So we'll bring the face up, lift the nose and keep the neck long. Inhale and then exhale, side bend. And you want to bring the right ear towards the right shoulder in a way. Inhale and exhale, come to the center. Inhale in the center. Again, retract the face up. And exhale, the left shoulder and the left hip moves towards each other. And your left ear moves towards your left shoulder. Breathe in. Exhale. And inhale, move to the center, normal cat-cow or cow-cat. Inhale to your cow. Exhale into your cat pose. Tuck your toes into the mat and bring yourself back and up with your hips, lifting the knees, downward facing dog. In your down dog, you will try something similar. So with the inhalation, we will try this time to bend the knees a little bit and imagining that we want to bring or open the chest and lift it or rather shift it forward as if you wanted to close the shoulders a little bit in uh, this kind of direction. <laughs> And exhale, you round, you bring the chin to your chest, you can keep your knees bent, but it's really tricky to try to find that roundness, it will happen mostly in the low back, if you have it more flexible than me, <laughs> inhale, open, lift the head, and exhale, tuck the tailbone as much as possible, and then try to round, using your fingertips here, again, inhale, Open, lift your sitting bones. You're trying to tilt the pelvis forward. The chest is lifting and reaching forward. Exhale, around. And then walk the feet forward. And small steps. 
inhale halfway lift bring the fingertips onto your shins and try to really open you can keep your palms really down but you have to bend the knees a little bit more to feel that back bend and exhale this time lift the hips fold and squeeze your core trying not to really go for a roundness but rather to make the space in between your thighs and your belly a little bit less one more time inhale open lift and exhale so belly to your thighs you use your core but mostly your hip flexors in this case then bend the knees and now you want to use your core mostly so you have to expand the space in your hips in the front of your hips so you have to start lifting and then there is this space created between your belly and your thighs so your low back can round <laughs> try to feel it you have to use your abdominal muscles quite a lot, keep your head hanging, chin at your chest, eventually expand, extending your knees that allows you to go even further maybe into that back, uh, not back bend, but forward back bend, forward spine bend, until you roll the whole spine and you lift your chin. Inhale, reach your arms up, shoulders up, maybe look up, maybe palms together, and exhale. Palms to your heart will go the same way down. So release your arms beside your body, chin to your chest. You can even push your hips a little bit more forward to exaggerate by bending in your low back, the back, uh, the roundness of your upper back. And then your hands are hanging and you're really imagining maybe that you are hanging something really heavy and that's bringing you down. So you are going all the way you can bend the knees eventually a little bit breathing alongside the movements inhale halfway lift and exhale fully folding trying even to bring the hips higher and this time closing the space in between the hips and your belly <laughs> inhale lift halfway and we're going to step the right foot back the knee comes down under knee inhale reach your arms up and strong feet pressing the feet down exhale bring the hips a little bit lower and down then release the hands so here the our what we are trying to achieve is to just open the hips since they are in a way connected with the spine with your inhalation try to bring the belly again away from your left hip if your hip lifts it's okay with an exhalation, keep that and just bring your hips a little bit lower. You can press from the back foot, it will make it a little bit easier on the left knee. And then bring your arms up, will side bend to the left side. You can use blocks on the left side or you can bring the forearm onto the top of the left thigh. Inhale, reach your right arm up, already feeling the stretch on the whole right side. And exhale, side bend to the left, squeezing the left shoulder and the left hip. You can keep the chin at your throat and look up underneath your upper arm. Inhale, squeezing the thighs together and exhale, side bend a little bit more. Inhale, this time lift, use your legs and exhale to the right side. So palm comes down and stretch the left just for this exhale. Inhale, lift up and exhale, palms down. Take the back toes, lift the back knee. Try to round your spine as you press away from the mat. Try to bring your left heel up, coming onto your left toes, maybe lifting the whole foot up or sliding it all the way back. Left leg comes up. Inhale. Exhale. Release the left foot down. So for those of you that come to my classes often, you know this one. So we'll try to find that neutral spine in our downward, fa downward facing dog so drop the knees those knees down before we continue and you want to just feel how it's supposed to be feeling if you have hips 90 degrees so you can just keep your knees on the ground and you can imagine that you want to create that low back back bend again the lower doses so hold your low back and just notice how does it feel in your hips especially as you tilt the pelvis forward how does it feel in your low back and then if you want to create the opposite roundness in your upper back 
you can grab your front ribs, even your fingers, and you can press them in and feel how this feels. This is really exaggerated. Also, you might try to bring the face back and it's a little bit harder to talk like that. So exaggerating the spinal curvature and then just minimizing it a little bit. Then bringing the palms down because in the down dog, it might feel like you have to exaggerate. Since we are normally sitting here with the hips bent alongside with knees bent, so our body is mostly used to keep the knees bent a little bit when we're trying to find the curvature again. But with the knees straight, it's really hard for the hamstring pulling on everything else on the backside. So finding that forward tilt in your pelvis is a little bit harder. So bend your knees and imagine cow tilt in your pelvis and cat in your upper back. So bringing the front ribs inwards as if you wanted to lift from your chest bone. This also brings maybe a little bit stability in your arms, in your shoulders. And then you try to keep that and maybe bring your knees slightly lower. Inhale, relax your neck. And exhale again, front ribs in. Lift your right leg up and exhale, knee to your chest. Same thing here. You try to round. You really try to lift as if you were kicking with yourself with your right knee. Bringing the left heel super, super high. Leaning, leaning, leaning forward with your shoulders and then stepping the right foot as close <laughs> as possible to the inside of your right palm. Even stepping the left foot slightly further. Inhale, Anjane, reach your arms up. Exhale, release. So other side, for your side bend, left arm, oh sorry, before we go there, first try to bring your belly and your ribs away from your hip, inhaling, and exhale, keep this distance as you lower your hips down, pressing from the back foot, activating the front foot on the sole, then release the left upper arm or forearm onto your left hip or thigh or fingertips will start reaching towards the ground or a block, Left arm comes up and already start feeling the stretch on the left side, going all the way down through the inside of your left hip. Maybe finding the ground on the right side of your right hip. Exhaling. You can turn your face to look up. Inhale. Right shoulder, right hip wants to connect as you exhale. Inhale, come up with control. Exhale to the left. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale, fingertips forward, lift the back knee up and then transfer all the way to the front of the foot before you lift the back foot and you step it next to the left one. Inhale, halfway lift. Imagine again cow tilt, rolling the shoulders back and down. Exhale, fold. And then roll up, bend the knees. You can try to find space first here in between the belly in your thighs and then roll the rest of the spines it comes a little bit easier reaching your arms up if you like hips back chest up for a back bend exhale palms to your side or to your heart <laughs> or to your side second round on the other side inhale reach your arms up maybe hips back exhale oh we are going to round sorry arms beside you chin to the chest and then round very slowly all the way into your forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold one more time. And then inhale, lift. So you can step the left foot all the way back, left and down. Inhale, reach your arms up. And exhale, palms can come to your heart or you can keep them, um, their, them arms up if you like. Take your left toes. We're going to Press and lift the left knee up. Really squeezing from your inner thighs. Imagine you would want to drag the front heel back, the back foot forward a little bit to activate it even more. And then we are going to bring the arms beside the body. You can turn the palms facing forward, inhaling here. And exhaling, twisting again to the right side. Try to notice if your hips try to go <laughs> in the flow of the twist. And returning the right hip is trying to go forward as you're twisting to the right side. It doesn't go, allows you to go as far as you would like to. 
in this active rotation. You can also rotate your neck, again keeping the neck, the chin and the neck at the throat slightly. Inhale and then bend the left elbow, reach it forward and hook it from the outside of your knee and then press with the elbow again. So you can bring the palms together, you can drop the back knee and just enjoy again this twist. Right hip goes down, left hip is a little bit lifting, maybe your spine cracks like mine. Then you can look all the way back. Inhale, exhale. Then we are going to release, left arm comes up, right arm comes up, the back heel spins down towards the ground into your second warrior. Then let's continue, right arm will come up, left arm down, as you rotate and flip and slide the left foot, turning out to the back and you bring your hips a little bit more to the back. You can lift your right um, foot, right toes up, flexing the right heel and sit all the way down into this low skandasana or side lunge. Left arm comes from the inside of your left knee, reaching to the left, right arm up, inhaling, a little bit of a twist, up towards the ceiling, and exhale, release. So if your left heel is lifted, it's going to be more tricky for you. You have to bring your fingers down and slightly behind your hips to sit. If the heel is on the ground, reach forward with your palms and try to round your spine and sit with as much control as possible. Grab your right hand, your left ankle, left arm comes up, inhale, activate your feet, your legs, and exhale, side bend towards the right leg. Inhale there, you can look at it again up, feel the stretch on the left side, and feel the squeezing on the right side as the side bend, then carefully lift reach forward, maybe you lift your hips or use your fingertips to lift yourself for the rest. You can always try and then do the rest. If your heel comes up, that's fine. Inhale, reach your hips a little bit higher, chest forward, and exhale, transfer forward all the way. Left palm comes down, you continue twisting in the right foot flexed in the back foot, coming onto the outer edge of your left foot, dip your hips down and bring your right arm alongside towards your left foot with your fingertips. Feeling this time the stretch a little bit on the left side, obviously maybe on the outer side of your hip, squeezing the right side, inhale. Keep your hips low and just lift your left rib cage and stretch your right arm over the head. So it's nice stretch again on the right side, squeeze on the left side and then release palms come flat on the ground and then try to lift your right foot, right heel first, left hip is lifting, coming onto your toes, the knee can come from the outside of your right shoulder and then bring the foot, the leg towards your chest, lifting the left foot, swipe the right leg up and exhale, release the foot down. If you like, you can do a vinyasa here. You can roll the spine forward into your high plank, exhaling chaturanga or knees to chin. Inhaling into the back bend of your choice. Exhaling, downward facing dog. Left foot, left leg comes up, one legged. Downward facing dog, exhaling, stepping the left foot with rounded spine, trying to press against the ground, really bringing the shoulders even further than your fingertips before you step the left foot forward, right knee comes down, and then reach your arms up, activate your legs, tuck your back toes into the mat, front ribs come in a little bit, then bring your right knee up, inhale, Crescent pose, crescent lunge, exhale, you can release the arms eventually. So open the arms to the sides. Try again not to handle the hips, fixing them in space and only twisting in the rest of the spine, the parts that can twist, not all the spine. And you can also twist the neck 
again trying to keep elongating it through the top of your head breathe in exhale and then reach forward bend the right elbow and cross and put the elbow from the outer left knee palms together elbows in one line the right hip is lifting up left hip is moving forward look all the way back inhale and exhale if you did release the knee down you can do that and push even a little bit more into the passive stretch carefully rele releasing the arms right arm will come up lifting the back knee twisting the back heel down left arm comes up going through your second warrior continuing so you bring your right knee and twist the foot out almost like a goddess pose in between going all the way onto the skandasana on your right leg with your right knee bent and even flexing the left heel and sitting lower for almost like a passive pose but not really want to stay a little bit higher a little bit more open chest maybe your right heel will lift then reach your right fingers to the side to the right side the shoulders in front of your knee your pushing pressing it back left arm comes up reaching up looking up inhale and exhale release you can reach and try to come all the way forward rounding squeezing your abdominals to bring your hips with control down or use your fingertips eventually left hand will grab your right ankle from the front right arm comes up inhale and exhale side bend towards the left leg as you're here feel the stretch and even increase the stretch on the whole left shoulder rotating your left tricep towards your face on the left rib cage and exhale squeeze the left side body so left shoulder wants to go towards the left hip then come up using your core lean forward reach forward hopefully lifting the hips or using the fingertips skandasana lift a little bit more with your hips with your heart and exhale transfer forward with the right palm coming where it lands underneath the shoulders continuing in that movement rotating to the left L right outer side of your foot comes down left foot is flexed left knee comes up and then slide the left hand over the head and drop the hips reach back with your left fingers so feel the side on the right stretching the side on the left squeezing inhale and exhale just lifting the hips to the uh, hips the ribs the hips stay low and you reach over the head again the tricep toward, towards your face you're trying to connect the right shoulder and your right hip breathe in exhale release fingertips forward try to transfer all the way to the front of the to the front leg before you step your right foot as wide as your hips next to the left inhale halfway lift exhale fold and bring the palms down if you like you can bring your feet together do a little bit of a hopping here back and forward into downward facing dog and even forward especially if you're working on your hands then just doing a lot a lot of repetition with the breath with a lot of focus will help you to find a little bit more control every time you do this and then eventually end up in your tabletop so finish up inhale arch the spine come to your cow tilt look up exhale round come to neutral spine walk the fingers forward I like to come onto the fingertips because my elbows are a little bit bent but your palms flat works as well you just don't want to bend the elbows you want to feel them straight as much as possible and you want to really walk the fingers forward you want to keep rotating your triceps on the outer side of your hand towards your face 
you can relax your head your neck or keep the head in between your upper arms and then you walk 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 forward if your hips move move the hips back inhale and then exhale imagine that someone is pushing from your shoulder blades and is pressing your chest in the direction towards the ground it doesn't have to touch inhale you can lift a little bit and every exhalation I'm going a little bit lower maybe the forehead comes down maybe the mouth with the nose maybe the chin And then lift, rolling from the hips through your core to your shoulders and then walk the palms back underneath the shoulders, inhale into your cow tilt and exhale, cat pose. And then bring the knees forward, sit back onto your heels. So after this practice, feel free to go for, for example, your camel pose or maybe danurasana maybe you go for an inverted back bend using a wall into a hollow back kind of shape trying straight legs maybe bend knees so you can stop the video you can do whatever you like and then come back maybe two rounds of your favorite back bend and once you are finished we will come and lie onto the back. And you can very carefully bring the knees to your chest. You don't have to go all the way to the chest. Just noticing how this movement affects your roll back, especially since this is the part alongside with neck that gets affected by not just position of the legs, but also in the back bends, obviously, because this is the part that is already bending backwards into the back bend. So as you move the knees towards your chest, notice how it straightens your low back. This is why also hollow backs with the hips bent are so feeling so nice sometimes because even though it looks like the low back is bent, somehow the knees to your chest straightens it a little bit. And then if you like, you can move the knees right and left, creating small kind of twists here. Take a big inhale through the nose. And exhale. And then take a happy baby here. You can grab your feet from the outer edge, from the inside edge, and pull the knees down towards the ground. If your hips lift, try to bring them down even challenging yourself and trying to imagine that you want to lift the low back. So how much can you return to that natural kind of curvature of the spine? And then maybe even fixing the front ribs inwards. So not allowing your ribs to stick out, but bringing them in to stabilize the rest of the spine. This might be really impossible, but uh, you want to try. You want to at least see if it's possible, maybe grabbing your feet a little bit closer towards the knees and then trying that the same thing there. If you like, if you're enjoying it, you might want to extend the right knee, grabbing the foot from the inside and then changing again, noticing if something changed in the relation in between the ground and your spine. Maybe both legs straightens in the knees and release extending the right leg down towards the ground the left knee stays at the chest again notice what it did to your spine so usually when we go into a twist what happens is that we have the knees all the way up and the spine is slightly rounded. As you extend the right leg, you will feel a different spinal position. <laughs> Left arm comes to the side. You can lift the hips, pressing from the right heel, shift them to the left and then slowly coming into your 
twist. Move the knee to the right. Flex the right heel and imagine that you want to press down with that foot. Inhaling and exhale. Try to bring the left shoulder back down. Press it into the ground if it's already touching. As you exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And come back to the center. We shift hips back to the middle. Right knee comes in. And again, you extend the left leg. Notice if it changes, if it allows you, your spine to go back to the neutrality. You can shift the hips slightly to the right side. Right arm comes to the side. And then the toe open knee, right knee comes to the left. You can look to the right as well. And again, if your shoulder left the ground, your job in an exhalation is trying to bring it closer. Or even the reaching with your right fingers more towards the right. One more deep breath in through your nose and exhaling. Inhale, come back to the center. Then we will round the spine completely again, lifting the head, squeezing the knees, even going for a crow position. <laughs> and if you want to challenge yourself, you can try to roll all the way to the side and then trying to go back. A little bit of control without releasing everything down onto the ground. It's doing your best to transfer the weight. I like to use my knees so once the one knee comes up it's easier to move but can you keep your knees close to your chest and then without pressing the hand into the mat. How much can you shift using the side muscles or I don't know what's actually working here <laughs> to come back to the center. I think it's the shoulder that presses down in my case. And release down. You can extend the legs if you like. You can bring the feet to get your keeping the knees open, falling to the side, sliding the shoulder blades down and allowing the palms to maybe open towards the ceiling. Double inhale through your nose. And side out through the mouth. And staying in your Shavasana for a few more moments. Waiting for the breath to slow down. Maybe counting your breath a few times. And trying to fully relax all the muscles on your face, on your arms, on your legs. So feel free to stay there for as long as it serves you. And I'm grateful for you to joining, to join this class <laughs> with me. Have a nice day. Namaste.